Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. We will start in next two to three minutes. Uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. So we'll start in two minutes. Uh, next two minutes. We are waiting for a few more people to join us. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Hello all, a uh, very good evening. Uh, before I start, I would like to know, am I audible once again? Yes, Ekta. Thank you so much. Yes. So, yes. Hello all, a very good evening. Myself, Ekta Dubey, and on behalf of the Brenalytics team and our partners, Freshworks and Ozontel, we welcome you all on an interesting roundtable session, which is Effortless CX, how fintech companies are transforming CX today. So before we start this round table, there are a few guidelines that I would quickly like to highlight and make you people aware of. Requesting all the attendees to be on mute when the speakers are taking the session or sharing their thoughts. Of course, we would be encouraging Q&A. So when the attendees can ask the question, there are certain guidelines they need to follow. You need to raise your hand and mute yourself on your video and introduce yourself and put your questions to a panel. So first, I would like to introduce our partners. Freshworks. Businesses are built on Freshworks, which makes it fast and easy for businesses to delight their customers and employees. They do this by taking a fresh approach to building and delivering software that is affordable, quick to implement, and designed for the end user. Talking about an ex-partner, OzoNTel, it was founded in 2007 by an experienced team of technologists and entrepreneurs. The full stack customer experience software was built from the ground up to solve the practical problems that kept call centers worldwide from making the most of the communications platform. They're known for developing and launching the first cloud-based customer experience platform in the Indian marketplace. Since then, unparalleled customer support and continuous AI innovation continues to set them apart as they've grown to create a global impact. Today, we have some great set of speakers who are going to join us in the panel and share their interesting insights on how fintech companies are transforming the CX today. Happy to introduce our panel. We have Mr. Vikrant Saini, Head Customer Reengineering with RazorPay, Mr. Ashutosh Mohapatra, Senior VP Head of Business with Ajo Book, Fintech and SaaS Angel Investor, Mr. Rajat Jain, CPO, Lending and Consumer Products with Bharat Pay. Mr. Sagar Rane, National Sales Head with Zontel, and Ujala Kata, Manager Solution Engineering with Freshworks. And happy to invite a moderator on board, Ms. Garima Gatri from Ozontel, to take up this session. Thank you so much, everyone, once again, and happy to hear you out. Over to you, Garima. Thank you so much, Ekta, for the introduction, and I welcome you all once again. Thank you for making time for this conversation today. Before we begin, just a quick note uh, for our audience, as Ekta has already highlighted the instructions uh, for communication today, but we would really like this uh, interaction to be engaging. And please feel free to drop in your comments or questions for our speakers in the chat section. We might not be able to take you over audio or video due to time constraints, but uh, we would love to hear your thoughts today. So thank you so much to all the participants who have joined us in the audience uh, section today as well. Now, 
Packing years into months, the flip to our digital lives has been phenomenal in recent times. If you look at the silver lining from the pandemic, there has been rapid digital transformation across business models, channels, and touch points. We all were introduced to new ways of work and life, and we all had to adjust. So how did a diverse and massive country like India transform from a street economy to a screen economy? Underlying this shift is a greater need for organizational agility in tandem to closer ties with customers in a changing world order. The adoption of digital technology has been complex, not just for businesses, but also for our consumers. Indian fintechs and digital payment companies have made significant progress, no doubt, towards offering a good range of integrated and user-friendly solutions that harness advanced technologies and deploy innovative business models. And since digital narrative is a change in making, with the opportunity to reach a diverse group of audience, there have been numerous challenges as well. Customer priorities and expectations continue to evolve, and we are living in an age of instant. Convenience, safety, security, and scalability, while easing customer experiences. Quite a daunting task for the fintech companies today. But yes, they are rising up to this challenge, and we'll be discussing in today's uh, session how. Along with this, there is definitely a mindset and behavioral change. Clearly, our world will never be the same again. On this note, I would like to open the very first question for all our guests today. Keeping all this in mind, what do you see as the new customer expectations that fintech companies are trying to address? How are you designing better CX strategies, keeping these new expectations in mind? So this is the opening uh, question and whoever would like to uh, open the session for us is most welcome. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. Thanks a lot, Garima, for setting the context for all of us. Hello, everybody. Great to, great to join in and, and participate in such an engaging conversation. Uh, this is Rajat here from, from Bharat Pay. I lead the consumer and, and lending verticals. I think what's what's been happening here uh, uh, in the age of the digital is is digital has changed user behavior, and everybody wants everything instantly. If you don't provide something to the user, the user will leave you and go somewhere else. Since since it's about getting things instantly, as a user, the user does not want any issues. The user wants faster resolution. The user has limited tolerance, and the attachment to pro products. Has, has relatively reduced. And there is this problem of higher churn, which consumer companies are facing today. Strategies which I think uh, are becoming more and more relevant nowadays is being more proactive than being reactive. Gone are the days uh, where in physical products, the user would reach out to you and then you revert back to the user. You have to preempt what the problems could be and solve for them in a product-led manner rather than being service-led when it comes to managing customer experience. Uh, that's that's that. And, and, and also, I think one really other important thing is, is the entire value chain of, of, of customer experience, which, which not only is servicing, which involves awareness, engagement, evaluation, and purchase, and then support, needs to be played out by different uh, 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 companies differently. How do you manage awareness better? How do you engage with your user better? How do you enable the user to evaluate your product better and make the purchase decision is equally important as is the support aspect with regards to response times and self-serves, et cetera. So quite, quite many times we've seen uh, in our experience, companies focus on the support aspect a lot but not focus so much on the product aspect with regards to managing customer experience. And that in our experience has been the change which, which, which has happened over the last couple of years at least and is going forth consistently as well in terms of managing CX. Right, right, Rajat. I think you have brilliantly articulated uh, the exact pain points and uh, I would like uh, all our speakers to take cue from here and lead the conversation. Uh, over to you, uh, Asutosh. Yeah, uh, I, uh, thank you, Rajat. Uh, I think 
Uh, I didn't. Uh, very uh, succinctly and very well put down. And by the way, say hi to Swell, uh, one of my old friends from McKinsey. Uh, and Bharat Pay is one of the companies where uh, I think there's a lot of things have been done uh, uh, over the last few years. Uh, I would rather slightly from a from what we do. Uh, it uh, I think it's not pager both. It's padrar. Padrar is effectively what salary both in North India. Mein. So uh, we are a two year old startup, and uh, from a journey point of view of how <clears throat> uh, we looked at customer support, maybe what. Rajat would be doing in Bharat Pay may be different from what we are doing here. But yes, eventually we reach the same similar stage of how our approach of strategy would be. For example, what Rajat says, uh, said, many of those were already WIP for us. A lot of things are already uh, thought through. A few of them are already work in progress. For example, uh, uh, I think Ujjala is from Freshforts. So we use FreshChat for uh, uh, our support. Uh, and why did we choose uh, uh, Fresh Chat and over something else? Uh, I know Ozone Tel team, team is here. We also, for Teletrolling, used uh, uh, evaluated between Edzotel, Ozone Tel, and multiple other things. And then we finally used Edzotel for now. Well, uh, several things which comes to the decision making process. And why did we have to do it? Uh, so, our journey when we started um, roughly 21, 22 months back. The company that was purely from a point of view reaching out uh, to users. Ours is, ours is more HRMS. On top of it, we do lending. Um, so uh, we are kind of fintech embedded on SaaS. It's not a pure SaaS or pure fintech. So when we started doing SaaS, our main objective was to build engagement. How do you build engagement? Uh, it's never reactive. So we have to reach out to users. Okay, after your, your engagement has dropped you are not using this feature you signed it up signed off for it and so on and so forth Ustabad, once the engagement is retained uh, proactively uh, uh, then obviously you can obviously be, uh, say do you need whatever the loans etc etc and Ustabad be okay once the loan started a lot of people's loans are revolving uh, and people take loans because they have the capital, they have the choice uh, uh, that this is uh, availability of loans are plenty. So how do you build the relationship collections for and all those problems come into being, but then come into the execution side of it. <clears throat> we you know, were using Zendix earlier as one of our products. Then we decided when we are scaling up our one year is done, we have to do a lot more things proactively and Flesh Chat offered us those of uh, flexibilities and those modules, even though Fresh Chat was slightly expensive. Mm -hmm. So now what calls do you make, even if it is more expensive than a uh, Zendex to choose for something? Wahape value add was there clearly for us, and then we decided to do it. But then today we have another problem. For example, our sales uses lead spread, our uh, support uses uh, Fresh Chat, and for teletrolling, we use uh, uh, Edzotel. There's a uh, um, there's slight discrepancy between our sales and support in terms of the integration, which is still ongoing. Again, Ujjal, I'll pin you separately. I need help on that. But yes, so um, ours mainly has been that the same proactive. We were proactive from the start. It moved towards the reactive mechanism beach, uh, in between when we had a lot of customers. But then we realized if we have to embed FinTech on top of our SaaS platform, we need to be proactive even further than what we used to be at the start of our journey two years back. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, I think any of our strategy, whether it's to use Fresh Chat or Lead Squared or Exotel or anything, and uh, 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 even if it's slightly cost heavy, has always been towards that proactive approach of engaging and retaining the user before the user churns. Uh, user churn, if I reach out to him or her and say, why have you churned user? Well, yes, he did not give me the support. That is reactive in nature, right? Yes, a few users may return. That is their generosity. But then uh, uh, being proactive definitely helps and will always help any company anyway. Thank you. Uh, over right. to you. Right, Ashutosh. Thank you so much for uh, helping us understand your journey. And uh, I could see three very important aspects here. You talked about customer acquisition, retention, and how we build engagement around that. So I think uh, uh, Ujjala would be able to uh, lead the conversation now. Over to Absolutely. you. Thank you, Karima. Once again, uh, good evening to all of you in the panel and uh, uh, the team here. So we understand, right? Like, uh, you know, the customer 
experience the the trend has entirely changed you know one because you know with the advent of digital transformation what we have done is not only the startups which have already you know adopted technology but also the established financial institutions they have adopted technology and what happens is the combination of digital transformation adopting technology and the pandemic we actually started giving you know services digitally contactless and remotely right so that is from a customer side of things and that has revolutionized our customer experience also and like rajat has rightly said uh, you know with this uh, new millennial space that we are into a uh, lot of millennials now being the customers of you know these fintech apps where you don't even need a bank account right you just have a phone number and then you can go ahead and transfer money here and there so that also has resulted in that wanted now culture right which rajat has mentioned right they just want the support right now then and there and we've seen that 80% of them they demand these quicker responses and the second you know trend that we have seen is giving an omni channel experience now 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 that we're talking about millennials now that we're talking about messaging first platforms the the customers they not only want to reach out to you via you know the mobile app like you know you have a support on your mobile app but not only that like if a, if on our website there is a chatbot or if you know they could be using social media to reach out to you be it whatsapp so they want that omni channel experience they can reach out to you at their convenience but at the same time what they also expect is whoever they reach out to irrespective of the channel they need to have context of what the problem is right so they are also looking at an omni channel context and a personalization of the support that we are looking at mm-hmm. right and the third one which you know i have mentioned that the the consumers the customer exp- uh, the customers now they appreciate you know the ability to continue conversations at their own space and also on applications that they are already using like examples that i gave you earlier like facebook and whatsapp these are the emerging go to channels of engagement uh, of course we we are heavily reliant on our you know i think there's some uh, bandwidth issue at ujla's end yeah ujla can you hear us i think we uh, lost her or something yeah so okay so we'll uh, wait for ujula to get back and uh, while she uh, resumes the conversation uh, i would like to ask uh, vikrant how is he looking at uh, designing uh, better cx strategies and you know incorporating all those challenges which uh, ashutosh highlighted rajat highlighted and and the aspects that ujula was just talking about ujula i'll get back to you in a minute uh, once we have uh, heard from vikrant sure sure there yeah thanks prima and thanks everyone for joining the call i can see uh, some of my leaders are are present in the call hi mustafa uh, so talking about the cx strategies right uh, the main objectives when which you keep in your mind when you when you design the strategies are uh, the new products which you are launching in being competitive in the market and then stabilization of existing products and systems right new products definitely uh, your product team is is being the part of it they come up with a new uh, new ideas and then development team develops it it's and then we roll out in the in the production now stabilization of existing products and systems is is one part of is i think the major part of uh, which causes the customer churn right the turn around time of the issues so how you can basically drill down this how can you can make action items which are which are able to help you in achieving this strategy uh, you can basically see how many what is the turn around time for the issues so you have to drill down to the problems you already have in stabilizing stabilizing stabilization of existing products uh, moving as as ashutosh mentioned uh, moving from reactive to proactive approach so what we did in razor pay i can i can maybe um, give a brief about few few strategies which we have executed here so we have seen that some of our existing systems were were not stable 
right and uh, what we have identified is when it comes to technical teams working on those issues uh team starts working in the silos and we have business teams reaching out to these technical teams uh they struggle in getting the issue resolution done right so what we have done we came up with the idea of of creating a command center team in in reserve so we built a command center team which is responsible for proactively monitoring some of the critical issues some of the critical alerts alarms and parallelly send the communication to the business so something which your technical teams are communicating to the business right business teams will not be able to translate it they, they will not be able to communicate the same uh, same text to to the customers right they have to convert it into the business language in the layman language which people can understand so this team actually is playing a great role um, wherein in in 3 months we have came to a position that we don't have any p zeros we don't have any uh, infrastructure level outages right wherein what we are now now focusing on is the single merchant type of issues wherein we are going uh, we are we are going inside the products and we are seeing that which are which are basically not the incidents but these are all bugs right i'm i'm just talking about how the journey flows when operations operations come in picture we also uh, came up with another idea of building a customer engineering team which is responsible for taking the journey from the sales to the dev teams so what happens when sales team reaches directly to this to your dev teams there is there is a huge gap right there is there is a gap in sales team communicating the issues to your dev teams dev teams getting getting drained by the alert fatigue which is which is getting generated in your organization so we have built another layer between the sales team between the business facing teams and the dev teams or the tech teams which is basically known as customer engineering which takes care of some of some amount of issues and filter it we have trained these people dev teams basically trained these people and these these teams are responsible to take maximum load of alert fatigue right they are responsible for absorbing most of the issues which are coming from the single merchants which is coming from the single users and then whatever is pending which is something related to product bug those are the only issues which it actually goes to the dev teams right so it helps dev teams to earn some of the bandwidth to focus on the new products to focus on something which is which is an idea generator rather than focusing on the day day to day transactions day to day operations right so that is how we uh, we built the strategy and and we have achieved uh, world class numbers if we, if i just talk about the the command center in command center we have mean time to acknowledge the incident less than 1 minute we do have mean time to uh, mean time to engage the stakeholders within 1 minute right industry practices is around 15 to 30 minutes but this is something which we have achieved by automation within razor pay we are moving towards automating most of the most of the metrics we have for for the customer engineering teams also any questions i can take definitely a milestone now uh, worth uh, celebrating vikrant so thank you for uh, helping us understand that part of the story again a very critical challenge highlighted by you was organizational silos and uh, now coming back to ujjala i would like her to share her thoughts uh, and uh, help us understand how is she looking at uh, designing cx better uh, better cx strategies that that's right garima i'm not very sure at what point i got lost uh, but there was one another uh, you know point that i want i wanted to add one being you know we've also seen you know the smartphone penetration that's been happening right. across pan india right now it's no more only in the tier 1 cities but also in the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities now that has also enabled a lot of customers who are good in their vernacular language and not really english for them to adopt this new technology mm-hmm. now supporting them in a vernacular language also becomes imperative where our whatever customer experience platforms we are giving should be able to at least enable them to res- understand the questions understand respond back uh you know in the vernacular language be like you know we are looking at leveraging machine learning and chatbot and all of that but only if it is 
enabled with multiple languages it will make more sense to my customers who are in the tier 2 and the tier 3 cities so that was one another point that we need to also uh, be cognizant of and whenever we are looking for a customer experience uh, solution a platform that's something that we would like to adopt extremely uh, relevant argument ujjala because uh, that is where we get the space to uh, build a better brand recall i would say and uh, more personalization Absolutely. more uh, more uh, a stronger connect with our, our customers right so over to you uh, sagar now thank you so much garima and uh, so my fellow panelists have kind of covered a lot of stuff on the so called cx and the way they 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 themselves are handling it at their levels at their their enterprise level rather okay and a lot of learnings across uh, especially pandemic the last two years of course it's not over yeah, as we speak but the last two years i think that it has shifted a lot of pivot across the industry and financial industry has never been immune to it and fintech i always see as, as one part of so called the financial industry and uh, but when you say fintech this is financial technology the word typically used to describe a technology that automates improves deliver financial yeah. services okay and then i take the word called a cx which is customer experience is actually a heart of today's fintech business okay and it, and, and and this trend is going going to last till the time fintech is there or financial services there and uh, i may, i want to take this word from uh, rajat instantly okay he said everything is instant customer wants everything instant and uh, i define it such a way that you know convenience is the number one way for a fintech to encourage encourage their uh, so called prospect to buy their fintech product or services and this is driving your volumes okay and and to sum it up i'll rather say ki therefore it make perfect sense for the whole the industry which is the fintech industry to make cx as a priority or a top priority thank you so much absolutely absolutely sagar thank you so much and we also see in this uh, story of digital uh, transformation uh, just a minute uh, i would request uh, somali to please uh, switch off your audio and video somali can you hear me across region can anyone get in touch with somali and request her to please uh, switch Hi, Garima. I'll call and yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks, Neha. That's one problem. Yes. So, uh, to continue in this uh, narrative, we also see that. Uh, so many technologies uh, so many digital solutions are coming up but there is this uh, level of skepticism among the consumers right and everyone is not very willing to adopt to a new uh, environment and uh, there is this notion that whatever we have been doing so far works fine works uh, good enough so how do we move beyond this and how do we convince or encourage the consumers to adopt these solutions and how do we really bridge this uh, trust gap that is there and uh, i would like to ask you what initiatives or measures specifically are you taking to bridge this trust gap and build a uh, you know stronger relationships with your customers ashutosh i would like to hear uh, from you first okay uh, two things first um, there are again uh, to build the trust and engagement and retention is all linked uh for that not necessarily all the activities what we do is online um so if you actually think from a point of view uh, our business is at the intersection of a pure saas and a pure fintech company and uh, saas people in india today even if you compare with what uh, what byju's does byju's also has to do a lot of hand holding on field to get the things done for example there are a few um, uh, uh, kirana stores near our office who have taken loans from bharat pay but a bhar uh, uh, i take a liberty of saying here used to say one of the collection agents also comes and asks ki bhai uh, uh, this amount is pending so this 
the way we have to bridge the trust is, uh, I think uh, Ujla used the word the omni-channel. I would put that word and say it is cannot be purely digital. It has to be a, a interaction which is face to face through whether you call it account management or sales or whatever term you want to use it, it is your choice or anybody's choice, by the way, because that doesn't make much sense. It has just has to be, for example, if Rajat and I are there, Asutos and Rajat have to have a word face to face and Asutos and Rajat can also do things online. Mm-hmm. Now, how, uh, how to build trust takes a lot of time. You cannot buy trust. Right. Trust is earned. Whether, uh, for example, uh, if uh, say Rajat or Asutos uh, uh, or Ujjala has a team of say 100 people or 500 people, whoever it is, uh, I can't just come and say, okay, uh, you guys, uh, I am I will be managing or taking responsibility of you guys. So trust me. <laughs> the same goes for customers and employees and customers, you have to treat very almost the same way. Customers, to, first is what we promise has to be delivered, right? So... Uh, <clears throat> The way we work with the product or the engineering team today is that a uh, bug fits or uh, an issue trumps any new development. For example, whatever we have offered today, for example, eight, uh, 10 features are there in our offering, which includes lending or payments uh, through Razorpay. So we, you know, we use Razorpay as well uh, and uh, say eight features on our, uh, on our product. Everything should be working on a 99.9% uptime. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least so that is from from a point of view of uh, engineering and product uh, 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 tr now given the scale of clients we have we have roughly 50000 clients who pay us uh, on a saas basis and 500000 clients more than slightly more than that who are using on the free service as well now there's so many api calls there's so many service requests which happen there even 99.9% is not enough so our next benchmark is how can we do 99.99% of uptime on almost all our services. Uh, then once that is done, then the trust is built. What the second part of the trust is what is called the relationship building. If, if say, uh, Vitrant is my client and, uh, uh, and see he is based out of Surat and we have a team in Surat, um, uh, how often do I engage him? How often do I meet him? Uh, it did not be every day or every week, but then, okay, let, uh, maybe I'll meet him from a key account management or any other term you use from a point of view. Okay, Vitran, do you have a problem which you can solve for? Is there something else which may not be my uh, forte or my offering, but I can connect him to something else. But that is the second build, part of building trust, which is the offline side of it, which has, which is kind of a natural empathy part of the salesperson or the account management person. So, so yes, uh, to answer your question briefly, Online, whatever we promise, we deliver. We deliver with a significantly high uptime. And when the scale of customers grows high, the 99.99 and nines get added to it. And second part is nothing can replace the um, offline chat of relationship building, especially when I come from a point of view of SaaS business. Fintech, a lot of it can be done uh, digital, but still there's always an element of uh, physical and digital trust building processes and two are slightly different. Right. But right. yes, the common thread which joins everything is empathy. If we don't have empathy, uh, then, for example, Dariman and uh, I, we can't build trust between both of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, yeah, that's all. I'll pause here. Empathy is such a powerful word and uh, you articulated it so uh, beautifully. Just the need and, uh, you know, just the urge to talk to a human being at uh, some points and, you know, I think the online channels can never replace that. And we saw during the pandemic that how uh, people felt the need to talk to a human agent and, you know, someone, somebody who would listen to them, understand their query and offer them quick uh, resolution, but also empathize with their challenge, which you just uh, highlighted very uh, nicely. So now moving on, uh, posing the same question to you, uh, Rajat, how are you uh, looking at this uh, problem of uh, trust gap and uh, what exactly do you feel is missing here? So uh, completely agree with Ashutosh on trust uh, not being, trust having to be earned rather. It's it's not a given and it takes a lot of things to build it. Uh, see, we at Bharat Pay deal with uh, millions of merchants and now millions of customers through Postpay as well. Uh, for us and, and in our experience, 
especially we've moved from a company who was merchant focused to being customer focused as well. Both cohorts are extremely different. Merchants are still adjusting, customers are relentless, is what we've learned. Uh, what we've understood is that there has to be a mix of play between digital and physical. If I start addressing all queries physically, either through, I mean, forget meeting, even through phone calls, it's not sustainable for, for the business of our scale, uh, which deals in like millions of transactions a month and thousands of crore rupees of TPV, et cetera, happening. So uh, for us, what we've realized is through the value chain of the product and the customer experience, let's say awareness is, is the key. So, so what are the features of the product is something that the customers are more interested to know about. And most of the queries would come on that subject alone when any company looks at their uh, uh, actual voice of customer. So how do you bake that in into the product experience? How do you make users aware of features, et cetera? When it comes to engagement, which is next, uh, uh, how do you know, uh, 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 how do you plan your engagement in such a way that you do not over engage and you're also not underplaying it. So, so simply the way a Zomato would reach out to you when your order is left on the cart and would say you're just five minutes away and it will not simply ring bells uh, during lunch or otherwise for you. Uh, next is evaluation uh, uh, in the value chain. So, so again, like a consumer calling my call center and saying, boss, why is this at 2% rate of interest versus at 2.5 rate? of interest is something I can handle through the app uh, in itself. So again, uh, a product first approach is what we've been following for all these things. Having said that, whenever there is an issue for the user, and this is post purchase journey, when we talk about core support in the, in the life cycle of customer experience, we uh, typically divide our uh, 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 process into four key KPIs that we track. Uh, we try to limit the issues that are come up or that come up to us. So we call them incident rates, incidence rates, and we try to minimize those. We then try to figure out how many issues can be resolved by cells. So that's like self-serve. There are chatbots, et cetera, which happen over there. Next, we have accuracy of responses and speed of responses that happen. So how many like issues can be resolved first time by the agent who sees it. How can I equip my agent better, et cetera, to be able to answer the user problems. And finally, whatever escalations that come to my support team, and this is me picking up from what Vikrant had earlier mentioned, there is, there is this innate, uh, 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 I should say, uh, tiredness of the engineering when engineering ends up doing support related work. So escalation cases are equally important. Like what are the tax, et cetera, that can be managed on escalations. As consumers, I mean, now e-commerce, and I'll take that as an example because FinTech is, is, is relatively, uh, 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 e-commerce is an older industry than FinTech uh, per se. E-commerce has possibly perfected or like crafted their support in a much better manner than what FinTech has done till now. Uh, all of us as users, when new and new e-commerce sites came by, we would prefer to buy from an Amazon because we would know that their support guy would solve issues. When I talk about credit cards, for instance, like while I may be using three credit cards myself, I prefer to talk to the Amex guy always over and above the other guy because I know that support guy is, is, is stronger and he will resolve my issues. Uh, so, so building the right set of support KPIs is extremely important as well. And to keep track of them, make sure you're able to deliver to the user is what you would, what would end up in you earning that trust eventually, uh, is, is, is my view on this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Rajat. Over to you, Vikrant. How are you looking at this challenge and, uh, what would you suggest? So I'll, I'll share my experience. So when when we, when I joined Razorpay, uh, I was managing tech support engineering, um, which is a kind of, again, one part of customer engineering team. Uh, you can call it a level two support team. So to identify the trust gap or gaps, right? we need to first collect the information from the customer and merchants. So what I did is uh, I created a survey. I reached out to all my enterprise customers. Uh, the questions were very specific. Uh, as an example, how do you, how often do you know about the new features about our product? Uh, do you think TAT or time within which the resolution provided by our support teams is agreeable? Or 
uh, if there is a tam assigned to your enterprise to your to you uh, do you think your tam is proficient enough to or knowledgeable enough to solve your problems right so based on these survey results i was able to capture some high level areas if there is a there is a knowledge gap within a team if there is so so what i did is i i categorized the team into three different verticals uh, one is taking care of all the enterprise merchants there we have given the silver spoon facility uh, they don't have to raise a ticket they can directly call the tam which is assigned to them uh, this guy is more knowledgeable this guy gets the issue resolved without reaching out to engineering team right and then the second you have less number of gmv right you you classify them into into second category and then the third category smes you have small and medium scale enterprises so for for smes you can you can install chatbots um, i i i saw rajat was mentioning about and even ashish was mentioning about putting the chatbots if human touch is not there trust me uh, there is there is a the problem there is i mean satisfaction will not be high chatbots we are not that there yet we are not mature enough uh, so smes you can still because a very less business is coming enterprises much and you cannot afford losing so i think this is one of the strategy which i and from those issues you will be able to know about some of the bigger problem areas one of the problem areas which we came to know is some of the systems were not available right we we faced some outages last year which was long enough all our products were down all the payments were down razor pay right? we we took that as one of the initiative and out of that command center came into came into picture and the customer engineering is now shaping up right we need to send these surveys on a on a continuous basis because your your feedback keeps changing so now we are able to come out of that position wherein we don't go we, there is no major outages are happening but single merchant issues are still there mm -hmm. the bugs are still there because there are so many changes which are going into the system so how can we how can we capture those single merchant issues uh, we are in the in the engineering side working on some of the monitoring solutions also so that before merchant reports any issue to us how can we capture those issues proactively even if it's it's only limited to few merchants right so another another strategy which came out of survey results which came out i think uh, rajat mentioned one one good thing that you have to go and talk to the people uh, i think that gives you a lot of lot of insight how you are performing in the market right your support service is is there something we can do and then based on that you can devise your strategies within the organization Mm -hmm. definitely i think uh, looking at the bigger picture here uh, personalization human touch empathy is going to be uh, the key are uh, going to be the key aspects and uh, now i would like to understand from all of you what are some of the biggest challenges uh, that you uh, perceive while designing these uh, you know customer centric journeys and engaging with customers because we have uh, seen that definitely there is a problem when it comes to relationship building and customer engagement so how exactly um, are you looking at this uh, and what are the challenges that you perceive when it comes to you know uh, designing these uh, customer centric journeys because we have already talked about customer expectations but now taking cues from their understanding their pain points and then uh, designing an actionable framework accordingly and implementing those changes how difficult uh, is that for you so uh, over to you uh, sagar <coughs> customer centric so let's put things in perspective okay first of all how do you define customer centric business as that's the first piece uh if you think about it your cx uh, with your brand begins at the moment the customer realizes you really exist okay and cx is at every touch point which is your uh, sales delivery support renewals and i think i'm just trying to take a cue from vikrant where he was saying that they have they have so called uh, silver spoon to to their one of the teams where they can highlight the the, the problems so i'm saying cx or or customer centric is not at at the level of where uh, uh, your face is touching the customer but i think so faces which are not really really touching the customer but also in a part of debugging enhancing enhancing the experience at the app level enhancing the experience at the product level service level 
and even even at uh, kind of as as Ashur said, people who are meeting customers at the shops at the uh, touch points where they are engaging for various kind of services, be it even collections for this matter. Okay, uh, we see today that digital driven journey is kind of a linear, uh, and it it makes perfect sense for companies to prioritize so called your customer centric as uh, customer centric at every touch point. Uh, having said that, uh, and I think so, uh, a very valid point that we see that you know when you see customer centric, it's just not about chatbots, mm-hmm. not about being digital first. It also being having humane or human, okay, and that adds up to your cost. Okay, right. While we prioritize your CX at every touch point, and that too adding up your human, the biggest challenge I think the fintech is kind of looking at or should look at is. how do you address your cost and still ensure that your cx is up to the mark uh, i think that's that's one big challenge i see, I see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thank you sagar over to you uh, ujjala uh thanks karima so yeah you know we we did see what how the you know customer expectations have been um, evolved right uh, especially with this pandemic and i know the pandemic is i fingers crossed it's coming to an end but at the same time along that period of course you know we were able to offer customer services remotely contactless and everything but at the same time here we are talking about engaging with the customer and as we said i mean i think uh, this is something this is the pulse of this panel here what i understand is yeah chatbot is there machine learning is there but that human touch is required now from an for a human touch when all of us were sitting in our homes and not going to offices there were this no physical contact that we could do but at the same time the agent had to be compliant had to reach out to the customers with the required platforms and that is something i i believe businesses you know were having a challenge moving from an in person customer support to a remote customer support right so this is where you know we had to develop we had to move from, from uh, you know physical platforms to saas platforms platforms that were available on the internet not only that so as an agent i am at my home i am able to serve my customers be it via calls or you know even having a remote video session with the customers but at the same time when we are talking about fintech data security becomes a very important aspect right uh, so that is where you know we should also look at places where with you know some security controls wherein you have your vpn enabled but at the same time you should also see to it that whatever platforms that contains your customers data right the pii data all of that is also protected and available only you know within that particular network right so the so the platform should be compliant and also give the security of data right or data security or when the agents are accessing this now the second one that uh, businesses also you know uh, need to be cognizant of is an i mean of course i am i think i'm using that word again the omni channel i understand it's a combination of both digital platforms and also an in person connect that we give to the customers but as an agent for me to understand and give that personalized experience to my customers i need to be i need to be i need to be aware and have that entire context of that customer so just like you know ashutosh was mentioning that you know his organization is using tools from different vendors what happens is it's a disjointed system and we tend to lose i mean tend to lose data right but if there is a platform that gives you a customer 360 degree view like crm is the same uh, you know you're getting your uh, chat from the same person the calling solution from the same person the desk the ticketing platform from the same uh, vendor then you have that seamless integration and you also maintain the context of the customer and are able to give that personalized support to the end customers right so these are two points that i wanted to mention on what i feel were the challenges that businesses were facing uh, especially during the pandemic and even going forward since we are having an evolved customer expectation right right over to you rajat what are the challenges uh, you have perceived so far in this uh, journey 
so i think uh, i'll mention two things here uh, so see first is speed to market uh, and i think when it comes to building a new feature there is loss of potential business when it comes to customer experience and issues there is loss of existing business so uh, the biggest challenge with customer experience is you can't delay things you have to be again and I'm, i mean this is besides being proactive and trying to be proactive whenever something comes to you 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 simply can't lax you have to act and get things done that's that's number one uh number two i think it, in 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 this time where the entire dynamic is changing it's also about cost right now if it were about throwing dollars uh to give the best customer experience anybody and everybody can do it right uh, uh uh everybody knows that engagement rates are better on whatsapp over an Com- like changing your play over on 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 whatsapp uh entirely so that's that's the other thing uh i think the other the third element which i would mention which i think has already gotten covered is is making sure everybody speaks the same language your application speaks the same language the crm agent to whom the call comes speaks the same language the guy who's replying to emails speaks the same language uh everybody has the same uh 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 log of the problem and as well the the communication that has thus far gone out uh uh, uh is is again equally important and 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 maintaining that uh there is improvement and tracking performance across across this is what uh, uh i mean uh, is our best bet of improving ourselves on giving a better experience so that would be the third point Right. Thanks, Rajat. Uh, Vikrant, what are the challenges uh, you have perceived so far? I'll start with customer empathy in tech teams, right? Which is less as compared to business teams or a merchant-facing teams. If you talk about engineering teams, right? If you raise the issue directly to the to the engineering teams, you 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 tend to they tend to take a back seat rather than they uh, they will be more more proactive in developing something quickly, right? second is reach of humans at scale which uh, i think rajat already mentioned that i'm talking about economies of scale right you will have bots installed which may dissolve some of the quick queries and i think ujla did mention that once you have a a, a one stop solution which has the complete crm we may be able to solve i i'm yet to yet to see those those results to be very honest uh, when you don't have human touch Uh, in resolving some of the issues be it your sme customer be it it's your enterprise you tend to tend to get a dissatisfaction there so uh, i i still feel that the ai bots are not there yet uh, we we still need more mature agents who are who are taking care of the issues in in a way that humans actually resolve it I, I still remember one advertisement which Airtel did. They were they were displaying their open tickets at various locations. They mentioned we will keep displaying these numbers till it becomes zero. I, I still, uh, I mean, obviously that can be uh, a north star for Airtel, but humanly not possible due to human factor. Trust me, there is no state such state as Nirvana in operation support. It is a continuous process. <laughs> you just need to reduce the number of errors from the changes in your existing products. I think that is one key challenge, which I think uh, it is there. Uh, the TAT, Rajat mentioned the the resolution time, how much we can reduce. At the same time, uh, you have engineering teams lead fatigue, which is going on, right? So we need to take care of the employees also. So there is a very very fine line when you say the number of what is the resolution average you will have, and which is expected, which which can which is bearable and at times you have to let go your customers at times it happens right you you cannot win the complete world mm-hmm. so right. there can be a there, there should be a space for imperfection as well this mm-hmm. is absolutely fine because considering your employees um, you you need to make a balance right else you will you will have another problem of employee attrition <laughs> absolutely over to you uh, ashutosh yeah i think the you see the the uh i think all of the panel covered the aspects which are the greatest challenge but i would actually say one of the biggest challenge is the internal perception of 
what the customer empathy is for example if you are taking care of the business team if rajat is there rajat takes care of product uh, in bharat pay right now the uh, there's always a diff, uh, uh, and then the customer engineering is from vitran and uh, uh, sadra takes care of sales uh, um, so you see that the perception of empathy is very different the, uh, uh, when we say customer facing teams are have empathy speak to product manager in our team you will see mere se zyada empathy ho hi nahi sakta now the point is it's very different now what is that perception of the empathy if you see actually from a point of view the sales person who is selling on the field or on the call is empathizing with the person at that point of time support person is also facing the customer resolving the problem product teams which are proactive enough to reach out to customers all the time so there are a lot of teams product teams the good teams are always on their toes and speak to the customers every day day in day out for example in our company a few of us we speak to at least 10 users a day few of them are happy few of them are not happy whichever hierarchy you are so from that point of view then your empathy is at least or the perception of the empathy is balanced then you can say acha theek hai product to samajh mein aata hai support to samajh mein aata hai and sales also understands and we are on the same level of talking terms so i would say the biggest challenge is your internal stakeholders and the perception of what the customer empathy is and how do you understand that then i think all the solutions which vitrant uh, sadhar ujjala and rajat have said all comes to light this is the precursor when you have discussions and when your entire teams or the relevant part of the core team is aligned on that then uh they are okay they are and they are on the same empathy same ye customer this is the pain and this is how you need to resolve it if everybody uses the same voice which i think rajat was uh, uh, using the sentence as well then the problem is much more easier to resolve because then we are moving to execution front but what happens when you have a core team meeting of five six people and everybody has a different voice nahi this speeches need to be prioritized nahi ye chahiye sales ye batata hai inside sales ye batata hai customer support tells these things but but i have heard five customers telling me these things what do you prioritize who do you choose upon now that is where the biggest dichotomy uh, so the biggest dilemma comes in where if you do not speak the same voice internally then you cannot execute all the two tools which the panel members just said so um, yeah i'll just uh, this is internal and all what the uh, the four views came in these are what we need to execute dono chahiye hota hai in any company be it razor pay bharat pay ozone tel press works or in pajar wood does not matter or wherever you are in uh, uh, in any company anywhere right right so i think uh, considering all these challenges how aligned are we as an organization that is something uh, we need to put into perspective here sagar now to understand from you you talked about uh, cost uh in your uh, earlier statement so how are you looking at this challenge of cost uh, viability when it comes to customer experiences and how can fintech companies keep their input cost low while uh, maintaining the same level of uh, efficiency so we have got eminent panelists on with us today uh look i look at fintech at two sides one is increasing scale or increasing volume and trying to keep the cost low by all automations okay and uh, i think that the cost is a key factor in fintech because the whole idea is to kind of deliver to the scale and 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 with a small ticket size per se how do you do that okay so i think so cost at every level of productization services delivery is there and of course with, with when we say that i'm sure see it doesn't kind of get away by, by that so it, you have to also look at Cost at the CX level. Okay, let me give you a few stats uh, before I kind of jump into it. And uh, uh, also, as also want to kind of mention that there's definitely Rajat said that cost is the element. And if you have got enough dollars in your pocket, you can throw up and you can get a good CX. But yes, the whole idea with fintech company, as I said, is volumes and cost. How do you do that cost? But as I said, let me just try and jump on the few figures. so our 2020 vertical report card suggested that 28% average talk time has increased during the pandemic indicating a lot of human engagement and a touch which is required especially assurance empathy uh, these were i kind of gel with that and interestingly financial services vertical especially financial services vertical we saw average talk time going up by 150% more than any other industry uh, which you can look at 
in the financial industry of course you also have something called as fintech uh, as an industry and that also suggests that lot of human interaction is required okay and uh, how do you deliver human interaction with a high amount of efficiency volume most important keeping cost control typically the answer is automation and i think so the whole subject of fintech or fintech industry is based on so called automation so we will typically say you know apis and integration with your so called technologies at a single level platform is kind of crucial uh, we are seeing a lot of companies and i'm sure uh, my friends here uh, will believe agree to the fact that a lot of customers or companies started with so called digital first and they kind of move to so called human interaction and there are so many companies what we have seen also they started with so called human interactions and then they meant to or move to so called digital first uh i think the across segment what we have seen is yes and it definitely comes in with a lot of panelists been saying that uh convenience coupled with personalized uh, and a right mix of so called digital and human across touch point is most needed and how do you optimize that is with excessive deep analysis okay and then can we improve it over for example let me put it this way a dialer can achieve your so called first time right contact a uh, frame from a 24 hours to a 10 minutes three x more effective campaigns and a 30% more productive agent so these are all things self service and I, i just want to kind of add to a layer to it is self service personalized ivr can reduce 40 to 60% load okay of your so called agents and most importantly 20% customer satisfaction okay and while we achieve this what is most important and i think so fintech which rides upon all your financial services which is so combined in all matter matters i think so we sh- we cannot take away so called your security and privacy and with freshworks and ozontel which we deliver the enterprise great uh, security and services with hipa ioso psi dss dpr i think so so I, i believe that fintech ecosystem can leverage that amount of security and privacy at a fraction of the cost uh, while de- deploying it in their so called environment uh, i think a simple example uh, not directly related to so called privacy or uh, uh, security but yes there's something called as pii which is personal identifier information okay uh, even at ozontel we get a lot of requests from customers across verticals to kind of a mass this pii data at at the agent level and a supervisor level uh, let me try and wrap it up saying that uh, convenience as it convenience brings in skills brings in volumes brings in kind of a assurance to the customer that uh, it is an instantaneous award to them for getting that services right so convenience coupled with personalization especially the millennials we spoke about uh, identity and solving with automation quality customer support I, uh, my friend fellow friends definitely spoke about that uh, evaluating customer touch point using speech and ai is a way to go to increase your cx while you keep your cost viable thank you so much great insights uh, sagar thank you so much and now uh, moving on to you ujjala you were talking about omni channel experiences right so how are you looking at these ai enabled omni channel experiences and if you could share a success story or an example personal you know story that would be uh, great we would love to understand from you sure garima right uh, let me start with uh a digress a little bit and then i will eventually come to what i'm trying to convey right so whenever you know we are talking about a fintech company and we're talking about customer support for a fintech company and if they were to onboard a vendor a customer service platform then i believe they should look at into two aspects right first is the initial solutioning how we can have that one stop shop where the agent gets enough context about the customer and is able first of all able to receive queries from different platforms and also get the context and re- respond back to the customer right which eventually also if impacts the uh, time to respond but at the same time another aspect that any fintech organization should be cognizant of is the how how the vendor that they are onboarding can scale with the growing fintech company and also you know their 
ever growing customer base now scaling the customer service should never be an afterthought they should always onboard a vendor which will you know scale with them right and now while scaling uh, if we also you know proportionally increase the headcount the customer support agents i mean i believe that would not be the smartest of choice now having said that also i think vinkrant and rajat and all of them uh, they were talking about the same point in giving a a, a human touch especially to the enterprise customers and it's okay you know smb can it could be a healthy combination between technology chatbot machine learning as well as a human touch right so while scaling this is what you know uh, this is like that healthy combination that we have right so you have the artificial intelligence machine learning that can obviously be leveraged to you know service this increasing customer base that we have right machine learning can be trained to answer the queries it can be you know trained to give both generic and complex answers which essentially will alleviate you know the agents and deflect the queries right at the end of the day and also with chatbots we have you know decision tree chatbots we have natural language processing chatbots which again can take inputs controlled inputs from the customers it could be used as as the initial heavy lifter right and then take all the data from the customer if it's able to solve itself well and good but it can also seamlessly hand it over to an agent right now now also from the agent side of things you know when we are talking about uh, fintech uh, there could be certain you know many manual processes which we can automate with you know robotic pro process automation that's also something that you know the platform should be the vendor that the customer support vendor that we are onboarding should be capable of doing right now we understand that you know to enhance the existing chatbot now initial solutioning is done but at the same time as the business grows you should you would have to enhance the chatbot flows or other administrative work to do now that platform should be intuitive and also have that short learning curve easy to use where the businesses themselves can make the necessary changes which can lead to a faster time to market than having a complex platform and depending on solution architects to do the job which again will lead to cost and time and this is exactly what has happened with one of our you know fintech customers they are india is one of the largest peer to peer payments provider and they came with pain, po pain points of you know customers asking repetitive questions you know rapidly increase and that obviously increases the volumes because the customer base is also increasing and the agents are also taken off you know work for training and this hindered their work per se and skyrocketing costs which to provide that service to the base to the to their user base right and how we solved it was giving an artificial intelligence first customer service with customer facing bots as the first line of defense and we've seen that approximately 85% of the queries were handled by the bot themselves bot itself and not only that even for the agents we gave an assist bot which helps the agent in their on job training or onboarding and also you know as i said a graceful failover to human you know to the human agents for support now this is how we solved for it and in fact when we started the solution with them we only had around uh, uh, 35 bot flows but as they scaled up the company itself the fintech company itself have now created 800 different chatbot flows so that is how i would like to say that you know a platform should be ai enabled and give that omni channel experience at the end of the day to the fintech organization to give a seamless customer support thank you so much ujla and uh, with this we also have a question coming up uh, from the audience mr shailesh uh, wants to know with the increase of digital convenience we are seeing an increase of frauds also happening and ultimately affecting the end users what level of effort being made uh, by the fintechs to mitigate frauds at uh, customer end so if uh, rajat you would like to take up this question that would be great sure i think two aspects here uh, the first one of course is education so lots of times as a payments company we've seen whether it's a pay in use case or a pay out use case 
there are folks uh, in the market who misguide, mislead users, especially on the merchant side, right? Like anybody will go across and tell them, yeah, repay kar de through this UPI handle and that UPI handle will have somewhere a Bharat pe written in it. So we always encourage people to use the app. We have authentication mechanisms, fraud checks, et cetera, built on the app. We are not fans of payment uh, initiation happening from outside the app. Initiation can happen inside the app while fulfillment can happen from outside the app. That way I'll still get to know through webhooks, et cetera, in terms of statuses. The second, uh, uh, I think, uh, item here, uh, uh, besides this is how, how you want to utilize your own data to build proactive features uh, uh, which, which preempt a fraudulent behavior. And I'll, I'll take the example of, let's say, collections here. So, so for us, uh, 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 we, we see that there are a lot of uh, mispractices that happen uh, by collection agents, right? Now, how uh, uh, best can I consume the information that comes from ground and build them in my processes such that they don't repeat themselves is, 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 is an important measure. And they happen both on physical as well as digital accounts. So the example that I just mentioned is completely physical in nature. Like one of the collection agencies abusing their uh, 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 whatever, like uh, power or right, or uh, uh, I mean, neither power nor right, just abusing the, the opportunity of being on the call with the customer instead is, is, is practices that you have to correct. So, so education and then reactively how you can make sure that once fraud is identified, it does not happen again. Uh, so uh, an identification of the fraud and resolution of that fraud is not enough. Uh, making sure that a similar thing does not happen again, such that you have those processes, systems, products in place is I think two key areas of focus. Right, right. Thank you so much, uh, Rajat. And with this, uh, we come to the uh, end of our discussion. But before that, I would uh, love to hear uh, concluding remarks by all of you. What is the key element that you would like our audience to uh, take home today? What are some of the aspects that you would like them to reflect upon and you know understand that effortless CX is so much more than just technology and, uh, you know, just processes, operational efficiency or cost. What exactly uh, is the pillar here? So, uh, Ashutosh, you can... Uh... Yeah, I just, uh, very briefly, I think, uh, uh, keep in, while you train your team, you have a very high level of empathy for your frontline people. And the same way, as I said, frontline people can be the customer support people, sales people, or the PMs or engineers who speak to the customers. Uh, and second, empathy for the customers. So empathy is two-way street. Uh, treat your employees well. And they will treat your customers well. And at the same time, treat your customers well as well. Because we, can, we also speak to customers directly. That's all. Right, right. Thank you so much. Ujla, over to you. Right. I think the key takeaway is that human touch that, you know, all of us uh, have spoken about, though we talk so much about technology and chatbot and AI enabled, there should be that healthy balance between the two. And I think that is my key takeaway where technology can re never replace human touch. Right. So. Thanks. Thanks, Sujala. Uh, Vikrant would love to hear uh, from you now. Yep. So the, uh, so my suggestion is there is no no such single solution for all the problems. I think before you actually hop on to any of the strategy, I think collect the information from your customers. Go back to your customers, um, take surveys before you actually arrive at what is the problem area in your organization. That is what I have done. I think that is uh, my, my key takeaway. Okay. Rajat. Uh... So I think two things, uh, again, so proactive rather than reactive and product led rather than support led, uh, support is the, the most, while, my, while it might be the most integral component of managing a customer, uh, question, query incidents, but, uh, uh, I think the, the right way to think about customer experience is limiting tickets to begin with. Uh, so that should be the mindset, uh, at the onset. Right, right. Over to you, Sagar. No, a lot of lot of great insights. I kind of wrote something like 
like what Raj was saying, e-commerce. The learning from e-commerce, how how they great are in terms of their customer support KPIs, speed to market. I heard about. I understood from from Rajat in terms of how do you want to educate the customer because that's primarily important. And then Ashish was talking about training the internal stakeholders. How how do they talk to the customer in terms of their communication language skill set? Then we learned about from Vikram. How do you understand AI? But yes, it's still not there, and they can still be they'll be improved a lot. So I think CX to make it more effortless. Uh, I think there are a lot of things to be done across industry, and uh, and uh, it's just not a customer, but every stakeholder with interest in the company, which is the Top level guy or front level guy has to be part of it, and everyone in this narrative deserves to get a great experience. And I believe that fintech company can be the real champion uh, on the both sides of the equation to kind of change the entire game around. So it's, 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 it, this is where I like to conclude upon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sagar. So I think today uh, we saw that what effortless CX actually looks like for uh, fintech companies. What are the challenges that you have overcome so far? What are some of the aspects that uh, you know you're really focusing upon? Like all of you talked about humanization of brands, personalization, empathy, customer support, and uh, alignment and harmony between uh, the various organizational teams. So I think. Uh, there is a lot that we need to think about and understand from this uh, discussion today thank you so much for making time for this conversation and uh, we look forward to uh, learning more from you uh, all of you in the times to come thank you so much once again thank you thank, thank you so much thank you so, thank you so much, much everyone yeah it's a year from the brandalytics so on behalf of the partners freshworks and ozone tel thank you so much uh, mr vikram mr rajat and ashutosh for sharing your insights on the panel thank you lovely audience for jo joining taking out your precious time and being with here with us uh, we shall be sharing the entire sessions video with you guys and would be happy to reconnect you with ozone tel and freshworks for the wonderful solutions for the fintech industry so thank you once again and stay safe everyone yes thank, thank you. you bye bye thank you so much take care bye